You know what time it is right now? We talking about this yogi clat. This yogi. What a yogi do, man. Let's get an applause for everybody in the chat right now. We got Merrick, Benz, JT, and Brian in the building. You know. Yeah, I mean, the music was an accident. Yeah, uh, I hit play on the wrong. I hit play on the wrong playlist. It's all good. I'll be able to. Uh, I should be able to mute that out or edit that out of the stream um, uh, when it's over with. So I'm not too worried about that. However, you know, the main thing is the main thing. And we got to talk about Yogi. And one of the things that I found interesting was at Citizen Con yesterday, we didn't or over the weekend, we didn't have any. We didn't have any um, any panels from these two uh, talking about flight and talking about the things that um, are important for us and Star Citizen. Uh, we didn't get any updates about control surfaces, quantum, the new quantum travel and quantum boost and the future of flight in this game. I was ready to pull out the non <laughs> GHB baby oil. Yeah. You know, we can't go wrong with Michael Jackson, bro. If anybody hates Michael, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, there's something wrong with you, but let's, uh, let's get it right into this. Let's see what they're talking about at this Atmo esports. This is not going to be that long of a stream. Um, actually let me, uh, I'll probably record this that way I can, um, you know, throw it up as a video later on if, you know, something does happen with my stream. So let me go ahead and hit that record button while we're at it. And let's go ahead and like get this thing started and let's see what Yogi and them, Yogi, Yogi and the boys are talking about. Working closely with basically all people involved in Oh, we're too far. To title. Can you talk about that a, a little bit? There we go. Okay, so my title is no, my name is Yogi Klatt. My <laughs> title is uh, I'm a let me know if you guys can hear it. The volume's a little bit low. Let me turn this up. Principal vehicle programmer. Let me know if you guys can hear it. Can you guys hear it okay? Give me some thumbs up if you guys can hear it. involved in ship and vehicle vehicle gameplay to make the experience uh, for flight and combat good. Awesome, incredible. What about yourself, uh, Richard? What is your uh, your official title at Cotton Dream Games? Um, um, yeah, so my... Um, my official title is um, lead game designer. Um, on the guy doesn't know his freaking title. Responsible for the vehicle experience. Um, so I work closely with Yogi, and it's just quite balanced tuning. You know, vehicle. Yeah, Michael has a lot of songs that are uh, sleepers that people don't know about, and that's one of them. It's called Heaven Can Wait. This weekend has been. Yeah, let me see if I can turn it up a little bit louder for you guys. Give me one second here. I mean, so many things that have been announced, but what has your experience? That's as loud as I can make it. Any special experiences you've had this weekend at Citizen Con? That's as loud as I can make it, guys. I have volume maxed on all fronts. You know, and that's been the biggest surprise to me is how many people have turned up. Yes. You know, and there's been so many people coming up to you going, oh, you know, I'd like to Actually, I can make a little bit louder. Like talk about this. Is this better? It's just how passionate our fans are. I got it maxed out now. That's the biggest thing. What's going on, Ken? Welcome to the, welcome to the thing thing. Yeah, you know, and just how much they love the game. Love the game. Yeah, you know, okay. and it's just amazing to see, you know, and, you know, I just love those interactions. I mean, there's. I mean, there's so many bands. I'm They're really sure really talking about nothing right now. They're doing, really just started crying. doing introductions. Um, what about your? Well, <laughs> it's also Yogi than me, but <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I love talking to players, right? No, you um, don't. You liar. And I think, uh, for me personally, as a developer, you're lying, Yogi. Like, uh, my, my yearly dose of big love I get at CitizenCon. Yes. Right, because lots of people come to me, and like the 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 thing you hear from them is very diverse, right? Like we like what you do with a flight model. Can you adjust this or that <laughs> and so on and yeah, absolutely. As a as a player, uh, I, I, it's hard for me to pick. The thing is, like, as a developer, you sometimes don't know what actually CitizenCon brings because we something like I di I did not have a lot of like insight into. I think it's their stream. Like, like, I have uh, the volume really, maxed out on YouTube. Oh, that's what we're doing. And I have <laughs> nice. my uh, <laughs> right. Um, I have my volume maxed so, uh, out too. So I can't. So I can literally can't make it any louder than what it is. As a player, this all excites me, right? Yeah. So I, 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 it was a really good show for me. I, I loved awesome. it. I'm 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 glad. Well, I mean, uh, Yogi, any special moments that you had at Citizen Con this weekend that absolutely like inspired you to continue wanting to develop the project at Cloud and Grim Games? Oh man, 
<laughs> standing in front of the Hornet, right? Oh, yes. And then um, that was actually cool, I, yeah. I sadly missed all the engine tests. So my wife sent me a video about like like every couple of like, I don't know, 30 minutes, they did this one engine test where everything was like in big lights. I missed that, right? But I heard it a, long, uh, uh, a lot. A lot, yeah. But I missed that. But like just seeing that, it's like, yep. Yeah, and then of course seeing uh, squadrons being live played. I know that was great. Actually, I'm I'm, I'm not sad at the crash at all, <laughs> right? Because again, well, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's an actual game where it's actual, it's actual gameplay, mic. and of course things sometimes break and so on, right? But we'll, we'll fix them. Is it's that, that a vertical a slice? Now. It's actually the gameplay it is, now. It is, yes. yeah, it, and it is how it looks. There was nothing fake nothing, in there. That's that was. Uh, I mean, I was watching it while we were sitting up here, and I was guys, like, we got 17 people watching right now. Everybody hit that like button. kind of you know hinting of 2026 as well. Oh man. You mean when you when your cheeks. Hurt from like the yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, so Richard, how about, how about yourself? Any special moments at CitizenCon that really truly inspired you to continue working on the development of Star Citizen? Yes, um, yes. So uh, it just comes down to how passionate Chris is about the project. Yeah, you know, because he because you know you can hear it in his voice when he speaks about the game that he really cares about level. it. I you know, and that lower. goes all the way down. You know, right down for everyone in the company. Yeah. You know, and that just inspires us to make down. the best game possible. Yeah. It, you know, because that's all we're trying to do. Up or down. Is we're trying to just make the best game we can. Yep. I mean, I mean, I think this year at CitizenCon 2954, you guys absolutely. I mean, just the the team in general, man. It just, uh, you guys absolutely killed it, and uh, I can't wait. I, I obviously I'm gonna go watch it probably four or five times back home. So hey, <laughs> just for you guys at home, remember that CitizenCon 2954. All those panels are still already live on YouTube, so make sure you go check them out. If you missed anything at CitizenCon, please go watch it because uh, you definitely missed out on some uh, incredible uh, announcement this past weekend. So, well, we're going to be talking here a little a little bit about competitive events, right? So before we jump into the questions, any competitive events that you guys like to watch that the community throws in? I'll start with you, Richard. Yeah. So I'm a big fan of the Day of My Rally. So obviously it's the big one. Yes. It, you know, and it starts the year. You know, and it's just rally, really impressive seeing like. the teamwork in those events. You know, and that's what really impresses me is just the teamwork. But I also, the, it. it's the size of the event. You know, because yeah. because I think I, because I, I think I first came across you guys when you came to Manchester in 2019. I think it was. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, right then, you know, and that was back in the day of my rally. You know, uh, and it, it's just amazing just seeing Mike up. the level event that you can put on. Pop. Yep. You know, and it's also driven us to try and improve the game in those areas as well. Well, we're, we're always trying to break your servers, you so, <laughs> <laughs> so that we always make the team team work. And it's funny because uh, when we started Day Morale, I think our biggest one we had, which was last year, 14 different servers. So <laughs> it was, it was, <laughs> it was, it a was big one. yeah. But I mean, server meshing hopefully around the corner. Yeah. We're gonna hopefully break some more. But we love that you guys are able to get the data that you guys need for us to hopefully continue pushing these events to the next level. So same question to you, uh, Yogi. Any <laughs> events that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Any events that you like watching? I, I, I know you mentioned playing a lot, so I mean, I do, it's okay do, if you don't I watch. I do play a lot. Yes. I, I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of watching Twitch streams myself. He's um, got a very short attention span, so you have to okay. Yeah, I'm okay, like, that a, makes like sense. a monkey, yeah. right? <laughs> but, but no, like, I, of course, I heard about the day really and the other things that happen. I mean, I just, just hearing what other people, how they coordinate in the verse to get things like that done is so breathtaking. Yeah. Um, and it and it does affect this is all like just, uh, uh, like the, the decision making right sometimes in terms of what kind of fixes to prioritize. Yeah. I think there was one one patch where hey Demo is, is, is coming up. Can you please like look at the physics, physics. Yeah, yeah. Fuck, or something like that. <laughs> so that definitely happened in the past. So I'm yeah, when I go back to playing the like, game, although I'm not watching, so I, I know loud. that you guys know are yeah. there, and it's amazing. I mean, there's a there's a screen up there in front of me which which showed like scenes and what's happening, and I think that's that's amazing. Um, that's just. It's so beautiful seeing I mean, yeah, This stream is all about you yeah. guys, man. I don't do this for me. No I do this for you guys, and I want <laughs> the, the streams to be perfect. You know? <laughs> it's just yeah, fun. You know, perfect for you all. I do think back a couple of years ago, we had a bug where the ground vehicles would randomly explode. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes, so yeah. Yes. I mean, they still fall through the planes, so that's still pretty yeah, yeah. It was that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy because the evolution of the game rally every year grows by like 30%. When you guys put a new vehicle in the game, we get so much people because they want to try the new vehicle in the most dirtiest race at first. It's like, we want to try to do rally and we, everybody's like can we use it can we use it so like this year it's like we're getting a lot of questions about like the, the Mirai Pulse they're like hey can we use it we're like hey man let us concentrate on Citizen Con before man, get to the questions. <laughs> we, we don't care about this building day building all the rules for for the Demo Rally so we uh, know for you guys that are watching Chose. at home again thank you guys Let's so much for joining it. us again I am here with Yogi Clyde and Richard Tyler and we're about to start here talking about competitive events uh this is what the panel is about so we're going to touch up topics about ground vehicles a little bit about the flight model and then we're going to hopefully ask about what makes uh you know these two 
uh, CIG developers passionate about just, you know, working on the game. So um, without further ado, Richard, you mind if I start with the first question here? Go for it. Let's All go. right. So, uh, you All know, right, how does the future go. of ground and gravel of vehicles look, right? I is there more tuning that needs to be done at any time frame, time frame on when we plan on seeing this change? And this Squirrel. is kind of uh, uh, relative to, you know, the ground vehicle physics that I, I believe that are, you guys already mentioned in, in past like ISCs. Yeah, so Real quick, y'all, I just want to give everybody watching a, a round of applause right now. We got 19 people watching. You know what I'm give yourself a pat on the back for being here. Uh, if you're new to the channel, make sure that you subscribe and all that stuff and get, get locked in with me. You know, we're only going up from here. And uh, we got a lot of uh, exciting content to get through. We got a, a Citizen Con. Uh, you know, we're going to be grading that later this week. So make sure you, uh, you, you, you tune in for that. We're going to be grading it live. I thought about doing um, just a standalone upload. But I figure if we can create it live together, I can get feedback. And we can all give it, you know what I'm saying, a collective score from the community. I think that's more impactful than just me uh, giving it a grade myself. So make sure you get locked in and subscribe and we'll be doing that later on this week because you know the live servers are terrible so this is what we're going to do we're going to talk about the game instead of playing the game because that's what most of these content creators do anyway so we did a kind of really big update to the overall ground flick experience and this was to add um, you know um, a brand new time model which would allow us to generate the correct forces for the ground vehicles and this allowed us to free up the movement of the physics bodies yes. to do the ground vehicles are so terrible right now like like everything has oversteer. It's like Tokyo drift. You can drift a tank right now, which is crazy. So the ground vehicle physics actually suck and they're lying to us straight to our face. Um, and I don't like that. The ground vehicle physics are terrible. Tanks don't do tank things. Tanks can barely go up hills. They don't have enough power. I don't know what's going on with them, but if you ever seen a tank like in real life, or if, even if you look at a game like, um, uh, Delta Force, their tank physics is better than what they've done, and Delta Force barely came out this year, you know? So, Squirrel, this is all about uh, Yogi and the flight model and stuff at the Atmo, Atmo Esports panel because they didn't have a panel for flight at CitizenCon, which is kind of crazy, and that's the main way that we interact through the universe in Star Citizen is through flight. Allow the vehicles to move properly. Okay. So, you know, when you go across terrain, hit rocks, the vehicle would move. Whereas before, it was quite static and it had a lot of dampening. So if you jumped, it would just feel like this. But now it goes like this. You guys like, like that, this. yes. But, in, you know, that was just phase one of moving the ground vehicles to new physics. And we worked a lot on solving the problems that adding proper physics to the ground vehicles, you know, created, which was, you know, we had a lot of collision problems. And when we first put the ground vehicles in, you would hit a rock and flip over 16 times because there was a suspension force that would click through the rock oh wow and that okay. was it but we fixed that and now you hit rocks and you can climb up them climb properly up the rocks, yep. yeah you know so we've moved a tank can go over a rock you hit a if you hit a rock with a tank the tank just stops you know i wish they would just stop lying bro i wish they would just not do this because like we can actually test what they're saying and see if what they're saying is actually true and we are and we know that it's not like, we know that it's not. They are such liars. And these two guys really, really make me upset. You know, I don't get mad at John Crew and the other people that designed the ships. It's the people that are programming the ships and how they fly and the vehicles too and how they function. It's quite retarded, uh, literally. So let me explain it to you guys. So you guys, know, like, know how we have, like, the hover bikes. And, and if you ride, like, a regular motorcycle, you know that you can lean the bike independently uh it doesn't matter if you're moving forward or not you can lean that bike to the side and one of the things i've been saying in this game is that we need the the i guess the roll axis it would be the z axis for the for the hover bikes and the hover quads and all that stuff it needs to be independent of the strafe that way we can actually ride the bikes how they're designed to be uh how they're designed to be you know used instead the the strafe controls your 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 yaw and your strafe control how that bike uh leans and that shouldn't be the case i should be able to lean the bike you know what i'm saying and uh and control it that way but we can't which is kind of dumb most of the ground vehicles we've still got the mule on the old physics but we plan yeah. to move that to the new oh, physics beautiful. um 
you know, we've got some improvements we want to do to tank, you know, because we learned a lot moving yes, the tanks you know, need to do tank over. So we want to move what we've learned with those vehicles to the tanks, but also to the grav left vehicles as well. As well, okay. You know, because we've got a fairly okay experience when it when it's working smoothly, it feels generally quite good to play. Yes. But there's a lot of outliers still that the consequences of the decisions we made at the time. Yep. You know, so we want to fix those. So you know, a good example is when you go high, you go high for uh, a high long time. time. They don't long have any inertia. Yeah. They all oversteer. Want you know, yeah. want to give player more control. No, they all oversteer. It's no, crazy. So I can't give a time frame, obviously, for these things. Yeah. But these are all things. That and the other thing too is like I don't understand why a vehicle like the Ursa and these other ground vehicles don't have all-wheel steering. Like it, all of these vehicles should have the ability to turn all of it wheels at the same time, especially since you know it's we're like this far into the future to give like these ground vehicles a better turn radius they should be able to you know turn the wheels in all directions it's quite ridiculous that we have a six-wheeled vehicle that can only turn two wheels at the very least a six-wheeled vehicle should be able to turn four of its wheels if not all of them that are on our mind for the next iteration you know, of these physics. I mean, we're we're just excited to know that we have new ground vehicle, you know, physics coming along because all all the ground racers, you know, are That's super dope, excited Scorio. about it. And, and it's crazy because back then the speed was like 180, <laughs> you know, 180 MS, but now it's like a lot, obviously a lot more manageable, a lot yeah. slower, but we're still... That's true, Mace. I haven't driven the new For some reason, uh, the day yet. rally was cut down, right? It used to be like 12 hours and now it's eight yeah. because now how the physics are, even though the speeds are lower, they're, yeah, they're it's still pretty yeah. bad, yeah. Yeah, so, so, you know, a big goal of ours with the ground vehicles was to minimize the time you spend on your roof. <laughs> yeah. Because it's well, very have wheels at all when they can so, hover. You know, That's true, too, Mashin. Yep. If, if, if they you know, wanted, wanted to, to like, Mashin makes a very good point. Like, the vehicles themselves could literally just hover. You know, they could all be Gravlev-style vehicles. They don't need to be wheeled vehicles. You know, if we have grav left technology, I think wheeled vehicles should really be a thing of a past unless, you know, you're, I guess you can make uh, wheeled vehicles for like the poor people, you know, so. Roll over. You know, once you start rolling over, we don't just want it to sit, you know, yeah. we want physics to take over and do a really nice roll so you can end back on wheels and keep that momentum going. Yep. So yeah, the new, the new, hum the new uh, Hummer EV can literally crab walk. Like, this is what I'm saying. It's like, they don't look at the world we currently live in and say like, oh, dang, like, these vehicles can do all of these crazy things. Let's design our future vehicles to be kind of in the same way. Now, I, I know, like, you know, they have to code this stuff and all that, but these are just ground vehicles. It's not like, it's not like they are somehow hard to code, you know? Even if you wanted to make them hover, that would actually be better you know, Masha makes a good point. That would actually be better for the game to have everything just fucking hover. Having wheeled vehicles, especially like when you're doing exploration and you're going to these places that have like these unknown and crazy looking terrains. If you just had a a, a vehicle that could hover over everything, that'd be infinitely better. So, it, so you know, it's to keep the gameplay game going. going. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. We got well, scarred in the building. Yogi, I'm going to throw you a flight model question here. So hopefully you're ready for this one. Okay. <laughs> Everybody's go. probably like something in chat. I'm just kidding. Chat, leave him alone. Anyways, uh, does, <laughs> <laughs> uh, by by any chance, does the flight model, is, uh, you know, change considering now that we have competitive events or like, you know, uh, we're throwing competitive events now. Um, is is that being considered or, it, you know, or changes made to make it a little bit easier for new players to kind of enjoy the PU? Uh, that's a tough question. The, the fl what we do with the flight model is, of course, influenced okay, by, by competitive events. Um, but it's more like, for example, when we did the 323 update and we did like uh, changes like on the, on, on the tricoding limiter, this basically yep. uh, reduced the, the entry, uh, like, l like the level of the entry, level, yep. like the, yeah, the, the difficulty to actually compete in these events, right? Um, so which was No, Yogi. Yogi. Okay, Yogi, you are a literal retard. And I'm going to show you why you're retarded, Yogi. Because of this. First piloting lesson. This is why Yogi's dumb. Watch what they put up on the screen. We're setting a new course. For that. Ready? Go. Watch what they put on the screen here. 
chat, what is that? Those are vector lines. These are vector lines. You can use you can literally use this to explain tricording. But instead of instead of you using the assets that you have currently in the game to explain tricording, you just said, oh, we're just going to put training wheels on everybody because flight's too hard. Then explain it to somebody. Explain to people how to fly. Just don't say flight is hard, so we're going to make we're going to restrict flight so everybody can do it. Just explain it. And if you explain to people through tutorials, people will learn how to enjoy the fly. Maybe they won't become expert pilots because maybe they don't want to be a a, 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 a full time PVP -er or a full time bounty hunter, but they'll at least understand the basics of flight. You can use this and you can say, OK, inputs input forward strafe. It lights up some type of way input your side strafe. It lights up some type of way. Roll it input some type of way. And then this little vector line, you will literally be tricording around the holographic um, enemies that the tutorial will create for you. But instead of doing that, you decided like, hey, let's just put training wheels on because tricording is hard. Get out of here, bro. Stop lying to the player base. Uh, I just, I can't stand this, bro. It's a good change overall. So it, it should it's not a good be, change. Be it's lighter. terrible. Um, what I have to say about the racing community, they, of course, they, they overanalyze the flight model a well, lot, a lot which is good. There's like, there's like a couple of people <laughs> in the community who are really just trying to. But here's the problem with m removing decoupling. If you're on mouse and keyboard, if you remove decoupling, people will be able to, uh, to spam side strafe and wiggle, right? The whole reason wiggling is a problem is because we have decoupled flight because it it the decouplers, they stop you from drifting too far. So, you know, it literally becomes. Um, uh, what's that game? Guns. Is, if anybody knows the game guns, there's this movement that you can do called the butterfly. And basically what the wiggle is, is basically doing a butterfly with your ship, which is something you shouldn't be able to do. Wiggling is basically you're, you're doing an animation cancel, which allows you to spam left and right. And because of the way the targeting system works, the targeting system depends, like your pip depends on the position of the ship. It depends on the position of the ship. So it gives you a firing solution. If our targeting system, like let's just assume for one second, let me see if I can open paint. I got to, I'm about to become an artist for you guys real quick. Oh God. Um, let me see if I can make this bigger. Let's just say this is your crosshair, right? And this is a bad example of a crosshair. And let's just say this triangle is your ship, right? When you're fighting, your my firing solution should not depend on where this ship is. It should depend on the direction that my ship is moving. So if I'm moving in this direction, my firing solution should be here, right? That should be my firing solution. And that firing solution depends on how I'm moving my ship and not how, not how this guy is moving his ship back and forth. Like he can wiggle, he can do the back and forth thing all he wants, right? But as long as I keep my position correct, it doesn't matter where he's where he's spamming his left and right. My shots will always land in that same position, right? And that's a very rudimentary elementary example of it. But that's the gist of like what I'm trying to say. You know, if I'm moving this direction, I should have a my own guns, my own ship's computer should always tell me no matter if I have a target or not where my shots will land. That's how a firing solution should work this far in the future. Or we have something similar to what fighter pilots currently have, which is like the funnel system, right? But the funnel system may be too difficult for people to read. And if it, even for someone like me, it's a little bit weird to look at. But if I turn on my guns and I start moving my, if I start moving my ship left and right, up and down, my my own tar my own firing solution rectal should be telling me 
wherever I move my ship, it's going to tell me where my shots will land. And it doesn't matter what my enemy is doing. And then you don't need to target them unless you want to shoot missiles, which can then lower your ship's radar emissions, thus making you less susceptible to being seen or being shot by missiles yourself, right? So that would add depth of gameplay just in making those few changes. To fill out if, like, they test the flight model to the edge, yes. and often enough point out bugs, right? Like like two people, for example, is like, uh, oh, I forgot, I forgot his name. Um, doesn't matter, but for example, g -Log, he's like just, just yeah. constantly, constantly analyzing the flight model, sending me things. Hey, if I, <laughs> if I'm at this speed and I'm going this way, and then I'm in decoupled and I'm flipping around and I'm doing this, this should not happen. And yeah, you might be right. Sure. So we'll take. A what shouldn't happen is if I'm flying in nav mode, and I press the button to change from nav to SEM, I shouldn't be pulling 90 Gs of deceleration. That's what shouldn't be happening. Pulling 90 Gs of deceleration. Uh, when switching from NAV to uh, SEM is absolutely freaking crazy. <laughs> Keep your competent solutions to yourself, right? I feel like whenever I make these kind of videos, you know, because this will probably be an upload because I made a mistake in the beginning by playing copyrighted music, but it's whatever. Um, but when I make these videos, people come at me and and, and talk to me like I don't know what I'm talking about, not knowing that I have 13 years of military experience. And I, when I was on the ship, I used to shoot the Mark twos. So I think I know what I'm talking about or the Mark 22s. I, I know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about firing solution <laughs> at, at the very least, because we don't shoot at It's very rare. Like we're actually shooting, shooting, sitting, still look, uh, shooting at a target, even in training. Right? Yeah, the space break is really dumb. Like, if I switch from nav to SEM, it should be a very gradual slowdown, if a slowdown at all. Right? But it's not. So, this guy, he's like these two people here, they're just lying. And I, I, I wonder why they don't have a, um, a panel at CitizenCon because we don't know anything about control surfaces. We don't know anything about quantum boost and we know nothing about the new quantum travel system. It's just like, Oh, don't worry about that guys. We'll talk to you guys about that one later, but control surfaces is going to be a very important part of flight, especially as they uh, use this new Genesis tech that they're developing to make planets actually have real atmospheres because right now planets actually don't have real atmospheres as as far as it's concerned of like it actually uh being able to like produce like its own wind and all that stuff everything right now i mean it's a video game so of course all of it's artificial but what i'm saying is in the in the future quote unquote the planets will actually simulate atmosphere better than what we have now they probably Go don't that's why it's not so, out um so in, in that, so we don't not, don't necessarily want different flight models for like you know competitive events versus yeah. the PU. Yeah. They need to follow the same rule set, right? Because we don't right. want to like tune a ship. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, then, yeah. Yeah. Although we actually yeah, we, we actually tune <laughs> tune things a lot, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, but Wait, you say you don't want to tune a ship. Take a look at this. So um, so in, in that so we don't not, don't necessarily want different flight models for like you know competitive events versus yeah. the PU, yeah. they need to follow the same rule set, right? Because we don't right. want to, like, tune a ship. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, then, yeah. Yeah. Although we actually, yeah, we we actually <laughs> tune, tune things a lot, right? <laughs> okay, um, I understand what they're saying there. But, but it needs to be, like, you know, it needs to be, like, feel physical, feel feel real. real. Yeah. Well, uh, let's say How are control surfaces meant to work when SCM has a speed limit? And what about ships that can't generate enough lift in places that stall out in SCM? Well, here's the thing about the control surfaces, and this is a very good... I think it's a very good time to bring this up, Dota. So we have rocket engines essentially on our ships that are that burn hydrogen, right? And what they're trying to do, they're trying to create a World War II style dogfighting system. But the problem is World War II planes don't have rocket engines. They had jet engines at the end, 
right? But a jet engine and a rocket engine are not the same because a jet engine still needs oxygen. The way that our ships works, they don't need uh, they don't need oxygen to burn fuel, right? That's why they can work in space. So when you're dealing with a rocket engine that can produce, you know, upwards of 15 to 30 G's of forward acceleration, you know, control surfaces start to matter a lot less. They matter, but they matter a lot less, right? A control surfaces would start to matter if you are starting to make maneuvers. That's when the control surfaces start to matter. However, as like you said, if we have these artificial speed zones with, with SEM mode, it's going to make uh, the control surfaces stuff kind of stupid because let's just say you're, you're flying, you're, you're trying to make an invasive maneuver and you try to fly upwards. And let's just say your angle of attack um, is too steep and you don't have, now you don't have enough lift because you're out of your boost. Well, then you're the, theoretically your fighter could stall, you know, and that's actually bad for ships like, you know, like the constellation ships, like the, uh, the caterpillar ships. Uh, what are some other big bricky ships? Uh, the 600 I, um, I'm trying to think of all the ships that don't have like actual like wings on them. Um, the 890 jump, um, uh, yeah, any ship that doesn't have uh, the Argo Raft, and all these ships that don't actually have like actual lift surfaces, um, let's just say they're getting pirated. If they try to escape and they try to pull up and try to get out of atmosphere and they run out of boost, uh, they could potentially stall and fall out of the sky, which is which is bad. Carrick, Valkyrie, Cutlass. I think the Valkyrie has wings. I think the Valkyrie does have wings. But never, nevertheless these ships could still potentially stall theoretically, even though they have rocket engines based on how they want to design the game. Now, I believe that these ships shouldn't ever have a stall because they have rocket engines and they're, they should be able to burn enough boost to get to a point to where they can jump on any, on any surf, on any, on any planet. These, these rocket engines should have enough, boost to get you out of atmosphere because th theoretically that's what you want. You want to get an atmosphere as fast as possible. So you need to use your afterburners to do it. I don't think the wings on the star Lancer max count as lift. They probably don't, but winglets, that's why I didn't, that's why, you know, that's, that's true. Um, those aren't like real lift services, right? They contradict their own plan for realism all the time. Just embrace the rocket booster magic and have fun. Exactly. Exactly. And to be fair, you know, so they advertised the Peregrin as like it having holes and cutouts in the wing so it can maneuver better. Well, guess what big ship has holes and cutouts to help it maneuver? The Hercules. It has big giant holes so the airflow can go through it. And on top, it has cutouts so that air can flow through it to help its maneuverability. And it has very big rear stabilizers. It doesn't have big winglets, but what I'm saying is if we're going to stick to the, to the magic of it, then the eight, the Hercules should be the best flying big ship in atmosphere because of how it's designed. Right. But what they're doing right now with master mode is they keep digging themselves a hole and their only way their only to them, their way out of it is to just start nerfing other ships. But the problem with that is, once they nerf a certain ship, another ship becomes the meta. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, they're not really doing themselves any favors with this, like at all. Like it's actually pretty crazy that they, uh, that they're, they're saying what they're saying because we know for sure what they're saying in the PU is 1000% wrong. Like we fly the ships, we drive the ground vehicles. They're all terrible. I feel believable. Um, it needs to be driven by like like the, the physics in the game, right? So we don't necessarily want like these competitive events to uh, basically override what the flight model flight does. Model is, yeah. So it needs to be consistent, right? But but the work and and the love that goes into into playing these flight models absolutely influences on one level or other what we do with it. Which I mean, but here's the thing: like we're telling you that the flight doesn't feel good, 
that this the speech is too slow. You know what I mean? And we keep telling you these things, and it's like they don't even listen. They think they try very hard to not copy Elite Dangerous. Master Mode is the brain rot equivalent of uh, space game design. Yeah, it's 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 literally stupid. Because here's here's the thing, guys, and I know that many people love Star Wars. I know many people have a very fond uh, memory and fantasy about Star Wars. But if I could be perfectly honest with you guys without trying to hurt your feelings, okay? And uh, like I said, this is probably going to hurt people in the feelings chat because I know there's a lot of Star Wars fans here. However, the flight model in Star Wars is retarded. Especially the the earlier, the first movies that came out like in the 70s or whatever. The flight model is retarded. Um, but the flight model that they used in Star Wars is the only flight model that they could have used because of the technology at the time, because they actually had to use real props and green screens and, and, and models to make the flight model happen. You know what I mean? So they could only do, uh, a, an airplane style flight model. If, you know, it was different and they had better technology at that time. And we actually had, you know, a lot of knowledge about maneuvering thrusters and things like that. I think the flight model would, 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 would be very different. However, I don't think a World War II style Star Wars flight model in space makes any sense. Because of the fact there is no, there's no air resistance in space that you have to account for. The only thing that you really need to account for is your uh, is the available boost that your ship can produce in its own mass. Those are the only things that you need to really account for. And if a, if a ship has less mass, right? If a ship has less mass, then it should be more maneuverable. That's just physics, right? And especially if it has maneuvering thrusters, less mass, more maneuvering thrusters, a lot of boost more, equals more maneuverability. But what they've done is they've made certain ships not fly well. Um, and I will, I will continue to beat this dead horse home until we see change because I'm fighting, right? I'm fighting for us to have a flight model that makes sense in a game that will stand the test of time. But if we continue with the flight model that we currently have, we're not going to, we're not even going to get close to that, right? Let me zoom this back out. All right. So guys, um, I've brought this up a few times already. This is the F8, right? Now look at its flight stats, right? Right here. This is its flight stats, okay? Because I, I know there's new people in here. New people probably haven't seen this. Again, this is 3.24.2 live, by the way. So this is the F8, the most advanced warfighter the Navy currently has. These are its stats, right? These are the stats for the Cutlass Black. The Cutlass Black has better flight characteristics, even though it's a bigger ship than the F than the uh, than the F eight. It's almost double the size of the F eight, but yet it it's better. It's faster in a straight line. It has faster boost. It has a slightly higher top speed, and it has better turn rates than the F eight. But this guy, this guy right here just said we want it to be realistic and to make sense. Well, how can it be realistic and make sense if this ship is better than this ship? The Cutlass Black should not have better flight characteristics than the F-8. Now, the F-8 can still win in a fight because it has more guns. Right? It has more guns, so it can, it ha it can out DPS it. But this ship should not fly better than this ship. It just shouldn't. It just should not. It would be fun to fly to be able to fly atmospheric flight and atmosphere and space flight in space instead of making them all the same slot. Yeah. Like, guys, I'm not here saying that I think that uh, we should be able to tricord an atmosphere, right? I think tricording an atmosphere should be severely limited because of the atmosphere. But in space, we should have a complete six degrees of freedom flight model. That's what we should have in space. 
I'm all for making atmospheric flight more atmospheric. It's a great idea, like Babel said. But they're just tr they're just trying to make it all the same, and it doesn't feel good anywhere. Which you know you've been answering a lot of my questions actually, but okay, um, sorry. Yeah, I yeah, no, 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 it's, no. It's just me. You're just good. Go on. I want to <laughs> I want to know because I know you you said that G Lock. You know, a lot of people probably message you about like you know. Uh, about the flight model and other things going on, but honestly, what is the best way for someone to provide, whether it's you, uh, Yogi, or you, Richard, provide you feedback that you guys will actually go and, and, and go back? Is it, is it you know, uh, the issue council? Is it on Spectrum? Like, where, what's the best way for people to know that you're actually listening? Because obviously you're busy, <laughs> but, you know, well, what's the best place? So, um, for... <laughs> <laughs> So we're, we're, we're always listening. We're yeah. not always replying, right? Yeah, of course. Um, so what what doesn't work well for us is if it's just if you do if, if you have like a channel in, in Discord and you know we devs are on there, yeah. you can write stuff in there. But the chance that we actually see it is not that high. I'm in a lot of Discords. Yes. Um, if you have feedback, be concise, be precise, uh, 100%. and try Videos, to yep. and, and like don't write a white paper about like uh, flight mechanics in space because like. These, these tend to become really long. Yeah. Yeah. You don't need to write a, a white paper about flight mechanics in space. Yogi, you can literally ask ChatGPT to help you out with this. <laughs> you know what I mean? You could literally ask ChatGPT, like, how does six stop work in space? It'll tell you. I've asked ChatGPT this just to make sure that I'm not going fucking crazy. You could literally ask ChatGPT these questions, right? You could literally ask ChatGPT these questions. It'll tell you. You know what I'm saying? Oh my God! You could moment. Yeah. Just tell us anybody. what you what you feel is wrong, right? And then put this in a spectrum thread, and then. Yogi, we've been telling you for a year. When did Master Modes hit the hit the Arena Commander for testing? Master Modes hit Arena Commander for testing around this time last year. We've been telling you for a year, Yogi. It's been a year. We've been telling you for a year that this is not good. You guys don't listen. You guys come back and tell us that the feedback has been good, and we know that it's not based on what we read on Spectrum, based on what people are seeing on YouTube, based on the conversations that we're having amongst ourselves on and offline. We're telling you, we're literally telling you, Yogi, that the flight model is not good and you're not listening, and that is the problem. So if you're not listening, people are not going to be kind when they are not being heard. We are not your friends. We are customers, and we are reviewing your product that we are telling you literally that it's ass, Yogi. We're telling you your product is ass and you're not even listening because we're being mean. We've been telling you this for a year. How, how much longer do we need to be nice and say it? Stop being soft. Put on your man pants and fix what we're telling you. That's all you got to do. If you're really a nice person, please be nice, <laughs> right? We're because not being nice like anymore, Yogi. Like if you, Get if over you, it. If you, if you basically cut away all the unnecessary wording and just be on point and precise, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, the, it's easier for us. To we were on point and precise a year ago. We were on point and precise one year ago when we were telling you that this stuff is not good, but you guys didn't listen. So how much longer... Should we continue to be nice? To, to process then, right? So uh, some of the stuff will be get read by, uh, read by us. We have a whole, like the player experience team, they, they're constantly, you know, uh, skimming, and the community management team as well. They're constantly skimming, like Reddit and Spectrum. Yeah, the, I had the same ICs issue with so the uh, speed limit. And, um, so and you can't and disable the they, they filter anymore. out the feedback first. Of course, yes. And they, and they, and they um, because like, if you, sometimes you have 30 threads wanting the same thing. Right, and then they send basically us. Hey, this is what the, uh, what the what the community says, and that we have like weekly at least two meetings, which is uh, which is just about you know flight experience and what we're gonna yeah. do with it, and exchanging feedback and some things like we can relatively quickly put into change lists and then okay. and then put it in. Um, although it's no guarantee. So you're saying, can I the the you had a speed limiter bug to where you try to set your speed limiter? Oh yeah, that is true because when we were playing the other day, your speed limiter was stuck. 
That is true. Sorry, but listen to a small group of people that doesn't represent the majority of the player base. I 100 really agree with a lot of Master Mode's hater. I'm glad he had you and listen to them. Well, Billy, you're a fucking shill. I don't know what to tell you, Billy. And if you don't like what the fuck we're saying, then get the fuck out the chat. You don't have to be here. And we're not a small ma majority. The problem is what happens is, is anytime we say anything negative about Master Modes, it gets removed to feedback, which is AKA the graveyard on Spectrum. So any negative feedback goes there and it never gets seen or heard from again. They literally had to take Master Mode feedback uh, threads down on Spectrum because all of the negative comments that were there, they had to close them. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. You don't have to be here. If you don't like what we're saying, you can see your way out, Billy. <laughs> I don't care. This is not the place for you. You know what I'm saying? It's, it would have been, Billy, it would have been much better. Uh, let me ask, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me ask you, Billy, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question, Billy. What would, what's better if CIG comes out and explains to you how to tricord and how to use your ship? What's better? CIG actually explaining their flight model or them giving you training wheels? What's better? Do you want training wheels or do you want to learn how to fly? Tell me what's better. What's better, Billy? Since, since you know everything, since it's so great, you tell me what's better. Actually learning how to use the, get the ships in game or getting training wheels. Because it sounds like Billy needs training wheels. It sounds like Billy needs training wheels. That's what it sounds like to me. You need training wheels, Billy? Put your man pants on and learn how to fly. You know what I'm saying? And and I'm not saying that uh, we need to go to a Discord and get in with this group and learn how to fly. No, the game should explain it to you. I started playing this game in 3.16. And at no point from that point, even until now, there has been very little tutorials to actually explain to you how to use your ship correctly in combat. Billy, it's been 12 fucking years. It's been 12 fucking years and there's no flight model. And Billy, guess what? They didn't tell us any fucking thing about control surfaces at CitizenCon. We don't know. We have no idea. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They cannot tune our balance based on incomplete flight systems. Then why the fuck is it in the game if it's not complete? You can't have, Billy, you can't have it both ways. You can't sit here and tell me, like, we don't have a flight model and say it's not incomplete because they don't have the, the final uh, flight systems in. They didn't tell us anything about the final flight systems at CitizenCon. I was stayed up all night trying to wait for them to talk about control surfaces, and they literally said nothing about it. It's been a year, and we haven't heard anything about control surfaces in a year. It's been a year. And even if we did get control services, Billy, we have rocket engines on our ships. They are not World War II prop planes that are internal combustion engines that need oxygen to burn. Okay? I don't know what to tell you, but we have rocket engines that can produce insane amounts of thrust. We can produce 15 to 20 G's of thrust in these ships. The Firebird produces 25 G's of thrust. Do you explain? Do you understand this? If you have that much thrust, you don't need control surfaces because you have enough thrust to overcome the forces of gravity. Billy, stop using the alpha phase of development as an excuse. It's been 12 fucking years. 12 fucking years. They should already have a flight model that's ironed out. It's been 12 years. You understand this correctly, right? Exactly. The Squadron 42 demo was a disgrace, Billy. It was a disgrace. They're literally flying on rails. 
you could have literally had flat cannons on those on those on the javelin and killed every single Vandal ship with flat cannons because they're flying that slow. I don't know what's wrong with you, Billy, but you need to get your brain checked, buddy. You need to get your brain checked. Flat mode will happen in 2.0, <laughs> right, Julian? See, but like, there's like, because of the of the amount of stuff that comes in, we often like it might seem that we that we're not listening or not replying. You're not listening. I mean, we cannot always reply. Correct. Plus, correct. Um, I mean, I, I try to reply sometimes, <laughs> and then it's usually getting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you get, you get. Exactly, Dota. Dota says flight is a central pillar of the game as a whole. It should be the most completed part of the game to date. Exactly. It should be the first thing they ironed out because your ships is the way that you interact with the universe. Fortnite is still an alpha and it's been out just as long. Alpha time isn't relevant based on phase of development. Alpha means foundational tech is being developed. But the flight is not a foundational part of the tech. The foundational part of the tech is server meshing. That's the foundational part of the tech, not flying. And alpha is just an excuse. It is an excuse. We are not playing fucking Fortnite. I don't know what to tell you, Billy. Star Citizen is not Fortnite. They're not the same game. They're not even in the same fucking engine. They're, it's not the same thing. Because you know what, Billy? In this chat, you know what you are? You're the minority that is sucking the dick of CIG for master modes, and you need to stop. It's very unbecoming. <laughs> to hold thread, and then you gotta stop and then you know yeah yeah and sometimes it's like slightly misconstructed what i said right yeah. and, and this happens sometimes i'm also just wrong this can also happen um but i mean these are like the, the, the donut platforms so the best the best platform are uh, spectrum and uh and, and issue councils and also like don't misinterpret uh, when we sometimes close it takes from the issue council it doesn't mean that we're saying this is not an issue yeah it might just mean we have already solved Saw it in it. a later release yep right but we won't maybe not solve it for whatever three two three two, uh, three two four very two right um so yeah yeah that was kind of my main my, my am i still demonetized no i'm not demonetized anymore i got my chips back they've had several flight models at one point i remember they're hovering like a, a hairy in atmosphere and it was harder to fly but it felt good not sure what happened to it i wasn't here for that flight model I'm a logistics player, loop without a loop, and I know salvagers believe that the flight model is very, very wrong. It is. Also, if you're not a PvP, congrats to master modes enabling trolls and griefers, and nobody, and nobody who likes PVE or PvP likes master modes. Only griefer net is benefiting, because My main point, right, the, re is that the reason, I, I know, the reason, you know, you guys listen, the reason why master modes is bad because master modes doesn't give you skill. The only thing you need to be successful in master modes is DPS and numbers. If you can bring enough people in uh, with master modes, you're more than likely going to win those fights. More than likely. So that is that is the reason why master modes is not good for the game. It doesn't it doesn't bring player skill. You can reach a very high skill ceiling in a short amount of time. Flight is not a foundational part of the tech. His bro, his bro guy just said that in the previous breath, the foundational in all interaction in the universe, yet he does not require tech, even though it's the background for most all gameplay loops. Exactly. Exactly. Listen, I am 51% PVE or PVP and 49% PVE. Okay. And I'm not at the top of the skill ceiling of PV, PVP. Anybody that's watching my channel long enough will tell you that. But I understand that this current flight model is not good for the future of the game. So let's just play a game here, right? Let's just let's just assume let's just assume that they make no other changes to master modes and it's released in 1.0, right? Let's just assume that. And we have all the orc stuff and all that stuff, right? The way the game is currently going the biggest orgs are going to dominate this game based on numbers because of master modes. Because all an org needs to do is show up with 100 people somewhere and just wipe the place clean. So you're going to have one or two options. Join a really big org and be miserable or be on your own or in a small group and suffer and not be able to do anything because the bigger orgs are, gonna, are going to always come in and dominate you. And that is the thing that we don't need in this game. We need skill expression in combat. 
And right now, there is no skill expression in combat when it comes to master modes. It just doesn't exist. We're busy working on the game, so we just want to let people know that they are listening. They are checking. Are you kidding me? Me and two org mates went head to head with 11 pilots from an enemy org less than three weeks ago. They all went down and none of us did. They all had a comp and they were all accomplished pilots. We were just better. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I, I don't believe it. You're going to have to post a video of that because if you did that, then that would put you in the in higher than the top 1% of pilots. I don't believe that. Checking out your stuff, yeah. whatever the issues are, whether it's on Spectrum or issue. No one's asking you to explain how game development works. No one's asking you to do that, Billy. What we're telling you is there is a game mechanic in the game that's not fun and people are not enjoying it. That's what we're telling you. And you're just sitting here saying, nah uh, nah uh, nah uh. And William, just because you can, just because you was so easily accomplished that, that doesn't mean the rest of the player base will be able to. If an org shows up with 100 players and 100 fighters and you have a group of just five or six guys, you're not going to win that fight. You're not going to win that fight, especially if you guys are just trying to carve out a little section of the game for you. You're not going to win that fight. I'm sorry. Council, hey, just be patient. Give him some time. I'm pretty sure, you know, they are like like Yogi said, they are listening. So and engineering is hard. It takes time. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> well, Richard, I'm going to throw it to you real quick because I, I want to talk about ground vehicles uh, one more time. And ground vehicles right now feel a little bit neglected in Arena Commander. Obviously, ship racing got some, you know, got some incredible courses in Arena Commander. Do we plan on seeing any ground vehicle tracks come to Arena Commander? My org is extremely competitive. They're not, they're mostly Army veterans. That doesn't mean anything. My Navy veterans. So what does that mean? Okay. You being a military veteran doesn't mean you're, that you're automatically going to be good at the game. I'm not, in, uh, I'm not just a gamer. There, are, There is still an extreme skill ceiling but you're not invincible anymore. You were never invincible to begin with. All that I'm saying is, is right now the skill expression is not very high. It doesn't, like what I'm saying, William, is it doesn't take long to become a really good pilot in this game. It only takes a couple of months to become really, really good. But the problem with the flight model is it's just boring. It's just boring and everything is slow. <laughs> that's all it is, man. And that's all we're saying. We don't like it. And a lot of people are saying they don't like it. It doesn't, you know, like, I don't understand, like, what the problem is with us saying that we don't like something. And we know for a fact, for a fact that people have been saying for a year since Master Remotes was in Arena Commander testing that they didn't like it. So I can't specifically say whether they're going to go to Arena Commander, but we are putting the focus on Grand Vehicle you know, kind of experience in terms of general gameplay. Yeah. And also we'll be able to the Grand Vehicle Racing, you know. Um, but I'm not going to speak for Duncan on that <laughs> one, you know, because, you know. Yeah, it, yeah that's true. Yeah, but, but you know. And William, if you are using coupled mode and you're spamming AD, AD back and forth and you're winning fights, that doesn't make you good. That just means you're just exploiting the flight mechanics in, in coupled mode. You know, racing is a big part of what I like as well. That's so all that means. It's about, you know, we talk about it on a regular basis and we push for but it's just about priorities at the end of the day. You know, we've got to move certain things forward first before we can do other things. Um, but, you know, yeah, you know, it's definitely going to be, you know, going to be like, um, an option moving forward for us. Okay. Sounds sounds great. And, and obviously for ground vehicles, you know, a, a lot of ground vehicles have these different components. Julian, that's exactly right. What I'm doing here, uh, Julian, and I hope that everybody listening, and please hit the like button, guys. You know, I'm going to give you guys a round of applause real quick. <laughs> for everybody in the chat right now. I'm going to give you guys a big round of applause. I'm going to give you guys a big round of applause because you guys are here in the chat rock with me while we're, um, uh, you know, while we're doing this, you know, while we're doing this reaction. Now, and I would appreciate if everybody hit the subscribe button. Join the channel if you, if you feel so inclined. Become a member because what I'm doing here, guys, I'm fighting for a better game for us all. I'm not fighting for a better game for me. Like I said, I am a 51% PVE player. That means the majority of my time I spend doing PVE combat. Okay? And anybody in my chat will tell you that. If they've been here long enough, 
they've been watching me stream this game for the past couple of years, they will tell you that I am a mostly PVE player. However, however, I still understand that this flight model, this flight model is not going to be good for the future of the game. And I am going to beat this horse. No animal cruelty, PETA. No animal cruelty, PETA. But I'm going to fight this with everything that I have until we get meaningful changes in the game. They need to bring tricording back. I'm sorry, but tricording is the future of combat. It, eventually, when we get into space and we have a spacefaring country and a spacefaring world, that is going to be the future of combat. If we ever get to a, a position like that, we're going to be making crazy maneuvers in space using maps. That's going to be the future. You know what I'm saying? Don't take my word for it. Ask chat GPT. It'll tell you. Yes, you can use maps for tricording. You can, you can add these movements together. It's normal. It's physics based. Spamming the, doing the wiggle is not combat. You know what I'm saying? The wiggle is not good at combat. I despise the wiggle. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not advocating for uh, the light fighter meta. I'm advocating for a flight model that makes sense. That's what I'm advocating for. Is, is tuning and I will never stop fighting. Something that is, is, you know, that you guys are thinking about to put in ground vehicles? Yes. Okay. Yep. Yep. So we're going to move the ground vehicle experience, what we consider to be the ship experience. So, you know, we've got ships with components that use fuel. Um, right. And then we're going to have that same experience for the ground vehicles where, you know, they've got to have an engine and, you know, they also use fuel as well. So, you know, and then the components you can put on those, you know, ground vehicles also will matter as well. Yeah. But, in, but in different ways compared to ships. So, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, but well, also, like, I mean, like, um, if, you, if, you, if you watch the, the stuff that Torsten always uh, talks about in ISCs or at Citizen Con and so on, this goes also in this space. Later also with crafting, right? You will be able, be to, able to, yep. to craft components which, are, which you can tune dedicated for racing and so on. And they will, of course, have an, have an effect. I can't tell you how much of an effect, effect. right? <laughs> because it's, there's always like the question, hmm, do we make this, how much of like a performance advantage? So William, I'm gonna ask you the same thing I asked. I'm gonna add, I, I ask Billy. William, do you know what this is right here on the screen? You, you saw this, right? You saw these vector lines, William? How much better would the game be right now, William, if they would have used these vector lines right here to explain tricording to people? How much better would the game be if everybody understood the basics of flight combat? They don't have to be advanced pilots, but if everyone knew how to tricord, that raises the skill floor without lowering the skill ceiling. Master Motes does both. It lowers the skill ceiling and raises the skill floor, and it squishes us all in together, and there's not enough elbow room for everybody down here, man. We got to spread it out. Pause, but we have to spread it out. that you get with nicely tuned tu tune components tune ship, yeah. and so on and we still need to find that but they will all these things will make a difference okay well i mean well 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 some of these components bring back some features in ground vehicles kind of like boost because uh you know right now when we're racing in the pu um you know we're all the same other than if you hit a rock right and there's really no different advantage in order to like i would say like ship racing right ship racing has boost control where you have to be very very precise with boost control on your straights in order to be able to you know be on that top level what about ground racing do we, are, we, are we seeing a little bit of that so i so i do get a jira about the boost being missing from the ground yes quite often <laughs> so, I, so it will be going back in at some point i'd imagine do you want to explain what the jira is oh it's <laughs> i don't like the boost system um uh I understand why they why they want to put it in the ground vehicles, but mm, I don't get it. I don't get it. I understand like they want it for racing and things like that, but like this boost mechanic just it just makes me feel like I'm playing Need for Speed or something like that. But uh, I I'm not a big fan of the boost mechanic. I just I'm not. I think that we should have proper uh, we should have proper energy management 
that if you want to go fast, you need to take the power out of something else to go fast. That's what I'm a fan of. Just having an infinite boost button that you can just infinitely pull, you know, with, with, with really no consequence other than wasting more fuel, to me, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Basically, a task. Yeah, a task management yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I, I know what your is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I know what it is. Oh, yeah, but I was like, oh, I had no yeah, no, no, no. As soon as it goes in, you're like, come on. No, I'll talk about your piece. Well, I, I, I'm pretty sure a lot of people are going to be happy about the boost because, like, everybody's like, man, this the Cyclone RC feels weird right now, you know, having that uh, boost. Yeah, well, it's just a consequence of moving to new physics and new. Yeah, heat based boost makes sense if you're thinking about like turbochargers and stuff like that. But I don't think they have turbochargers. I think I don't know what engines power these 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 vehicles. I thought they were all electric, but apparently they're going to add some some type of battery or some type of uh, energy system which can be depleted. Do you think that is it, true? Like it just didn't have a boost feature, you know, and we didn't have the time to time, re, yeah, yeah in, in order to re put that feature back in. But it will be something, you know. Awesome, love, future. love to hear it. So, uh, going a little bit back to the, you know to ship weapons and kind of like the flight model a little bit here, Yogi. Yeah. Um, you know, we know that ship weapons all have their purposes, right? Uh -huh. um, and I know that during you guys do a lot of testing during a lot of patches. Yeah. Are we going to see a full weapon balance on any of on on the on the weapons currently that are in game? Soon. Soon. Uh, so um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. So TM. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> when it's done. No. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, one of Torsten's team members, like Bastien, he did a really, really nice retuning of all the weapons. Wow. And okay. um, he included all the, you know, all the stuff that's coming up soon with like, because the weapons are components, which means they have different grades and they have different purposes Purpose. and different modifiers. And like, um, from our, ex like from our um, work before, we could not really go into the depth because we had other things to do, but, but Bastien really put in the time to actually uh, get a consistent and yeah, a, a very consistent uh, tuning of these weapons, okay. and um, this will come hopefully online with the with the full resource network release uh, oh, in 4.0. Wow. Awesome, awesome! I know you guys. So here's a big problem with weapons, right? Here's a big problem with weapons. The issue with weapons is even if I have like okay, for like the, the 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 Mark II Hornet, right? The Mark II Hornet has two size four weapons, right? The Hammerhead also has size four weapons. The problem is is that that Hornet has the same weapon range as the Hammerhead, and it shouldn't, okay? That Hornet, because it has a smaller power plant than the Hammerhead, its power, the, the maximum range that that, 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 wep that that weapon system could shoot on that, on that Hornet should only be around 1,000 meters. That should be like its upper limit if it put all of its power into the, if it took all of its power segments and put it into weapons, it should only have about a thousand meters of range, right? The problem is that's not how it is. The problem is I can I can kite that hammerhead at two kilometers because my size four weapons are the same range as those size four weapons. Light fighters and and ships with with smaller power plants should have to get close to fight bigger ships, and what that does is it allows the bigger ships to have uh, weapon ranges that in velocities that can reach fighters. Now on the flip side of that, you can't do that without giving the light fighters movement to be able to avoid getting shot, i.e. tricording. Okay. If we had tri, if we had tricording and, and closer weapon ranges for light fighters, now it's dangerous for that light fighter to get close to that hammerhead and those hammerhead uh, turret gunners actually need to have skill and not auto aim to shoot down light fighters. That would be the best case scenario for all people involved. Okay, but we don't have that. The issue that we have is I can still kite light fighters at infinite range. I don't have to get close to them. And because I don't have to get close to them, I can just chip away at them. I can chip away at them. I can chip away at them. If I get on the on the six of your hammerhead of your Connie of your Corsair, I'm not giving that position up. And good luck hitting me with your with your with your turret gunners because your turrets are highly ineffective because they have the same velocities as every other weapon of that size. Doesn't matter the ship. But if 
the velocities depended upon the size of your power plant. Now we actually have meaningful choice when it comes to what ship you're going to use for what mission. That even means someone like me who does 51% PVE, that means I can really no longer take a light fighter in to something like uh, ERT Bounty because those bigger ships can hit me at range. So I need to corkscrew my way in and to avoid being shot. But the state of multi-crew is so bad that it's pointless to bring it's pointless to bring a big multi-crew ship to a fight because it's literally a flying coffin. The only multi-crew ship that you should bring to a fight in this current patch is a Scorpius because it's interceptor tune and it has a remote turret. That's the only multi-crew ship that you need to bring into a fight in this current patch. It's the only one that could actually do anything remotely effective because it has the speed because it has the ability to, um, it has the ability to control engagements at, at some ability, right? Unlike every other, other multi cruise ship in the game, they have no ability to control range. They have no ability to close the distance on any smaller ship. So they're literally just flying coffins. Uh, I don't know how to say your name, but this is not a political stream. So I don't care like who you're voting for and, and what your political beliefs are. But keep that to yourself. This is not the place for it, and it's not the time for it. It's been hard at work in Fort Portnoy, by the way. It looks... Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have to go watch that stuff like four times because there was so much in it, and I'm super, super excited. So, you know, um, we're hoping that, you know, we get it all done, ready for the Day Mar Rally because it's coming around in January. Every time we always have the Day Mar Rally is like, hat oh, drop. Hit like, no! <laughs> but it's okay. We, you know, something that we've been doing at Apple Esports and we kind of did it a little bit with the video that we had earlier to talking about like we're built for this is because no matter what you guys do to the game, we're going to race no matter what. Sure. So, you know, uh, that's Thank us you, like saying like you I'm guys, to to that. you guys telling me that, you know, like Cyclone's going to go to three wheels. We're racing no matter what. So, <laughs> you know, I'll make a note of that. For yeah, no, hey, do that. <laughs> don't, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> so um, is tricycle racing. I mean, they're really out. they're really giving him some softball questions. You know, th and this is the and this is the thing, and this is why someone like me will never get an opportunity to, to interview someone like Yogi, because I will literally the same things I said here. I would literally say to Yogi because I'm not trying to be his friend. I'm a customer that's reviewing a product that's giving a company feedback on their product and telling them that their current product is not good and where they need to improve it. Like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna softball it. I'm not gonna be like, hey Yogi, let's be friends and I can get ships from CIG. I will never do that. Because one, I have integrity. Number two, I'm not trying to be friends with CIG. Number three, I'm a paying customer, right? I And Martin, I agree. Now, I'm not saying that Yogi should be fired. He should lose his job. He should lose his ability to provide for him and his, his self and his family. I'm not saying that. I'm saying they need to have someone that's comp, that is more competent, that understands six degrees of freedom combat. That's what we need. We need somebody that understands that a big ship or a small ship shouldn't outrange a big ship. You know what I'm saying? So until we solve these problems, the light fighters are going to reign supreme. And the other thing is, too, is that you can take a light fighter through the jump gate. So what is the point of multi-crew when I can just take my light fighter everywhere in the verse? I can literally take my F-8 everywhere because it can go through jump gates. I think go so. into that, right? So talking about Yo, a little bit of a, about about custom lobbies, right? Uh, I know there's been a mention about a spectator mode. I know DJ's not here. Is is there? Is, is that? Yeah, I, I understand that, but I'm also advocating too that I'm not advocating for Yogi to to get fired, basically, to to be able to to be able to lose his ability to learn to earn money. I'm not advocating for that at all, and I would never advocate for that. I would never advocate for someone to lose money, you know, but. He should be in a department where his skills and knowledge uh, can be more effective. And right now, him being the flight model guy is not where he needs to be. Like, I don't know who needs to tell him that. I don't know who needs to tell Chris that. But that's not where he needs to be. I'm sorry. You know what I mean? Um, he needs to be in a place to where his skills and his abilities to to can be can be utilized. 
you know, and and we need somebody that really understands flight model, that understands combat, that understands engagement, that understands uh, uh, that understands engagement ranges, that understands the geom- the geometry of the combat, and really just understands uh, how to keep the player base fully engaged in the game, and that's what it is being worked on or is, do, do we feel like spectator cam yeah yeah like spectator mode uh i'm not sure if it's on the official list i know that's something that duncan really like really wants one. to do, okay. really wants to do. It, it's really important for him like okay. like really important okay. he's really married to that <laughs> might have to make him a yeah. like a like a marketing pdf or something that maybe, i can maybe <laughs> maybe <laughs> no that but but duncan is really pushing for like arena commander to be as best as it could be for uh, for players no, Lee, welcome. Um, basically, uh, Yogi and this other guy here are, are lying about the flight model. Um, you know, they're 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 telling us like if we give feedback, we need to be nice and kind. But you know, we've been telling them that master mode sucks for over a year, um, and it it's not good. You know, so. Um, but that's for AC, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so spectator can And also, Noli, this will be as uploaded as a. <laughs> Yeah. This will be put problems. up as an upload um, so uh, later on this evening, like so what I would it'll like be to out see for you to, to view. We have dedicated uh, camera turrets, oh, obviously. right? Obviously. So uh, basically, Incredible. you have like like a special version of a ship or so that has yep. an equipped turret that could then basically, I don't know, track in. I mean, we have already like custom cameras for for the precision targeting, yep. and we have relatively free zooming there. So having like that functionality with more zooming, and maybe even like, I mean, changing the the focal distances or something like that. It's not something that's hard to do. Um, so I would think that for the PU related stuff, you rather would like to have something like that's based in lore than just being like, you know, an external spectator cam. Yeah. Right. So, um, I, I would like to see that. There's no confirmation that this will happen, but it's relatively easy to implement. Uh, okay. And it, it okay. has been in my. Well, I mean, if they want to implement something like that, doesn't the Kerrick supposed to have drones? <laughs> Aren't there ships out there that have drones? that are supposed to be able to fly and you have like a camera that can do like whatever, like why not just fix the Carrick, make the drones work on the Carrick, and then you have a ship that has a spectator cam on it. See how easy I just solved that, guys? I just solved that problem in literally five seconds. I just solved that problem in five seconds, and they're talking about, well, we could do the zoom, we could do this. How about you make the drones for the Carrick work? Did you think about that, Yogi? It has drones for a reason, right? Come on, man. In my because I do like racing and so on and competitive uh, events. And this was in my back ha- in the back of my head for quite a while. I mean, something too great is like if you have those cameras like in the PU, like yeah. working with something like Toby, where you can actually oh, like yeah. oh, control yeah, yeah. your eyes. I'll be incredible. Well, you can you can already like apply head tracking like, yeah. to, to external cameras. There's a separate option for the people who doesn't know uh, who, oh. who don't know that. So basically, you, you can go. go on the external camera and then and then go m- round. round and, like, yep. and this this works already or should work. If it doesn't, I know, send right? IC, <laughs> I've been saying this like all the time. Like I have the I have literally have the best ideas. Like if CIG were to ever hire me, which I don't know if I would work there, but if if I ever did work there, this game would be in a very good place. Like I would, I'd be like Chris. We can do this. We can do this. We can do this. We can do this. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> a, it might be broken, but I'm, I'm pretty sure. Like, like morphologist did a good video about this. Like, I think two years ago or so. Wow, that's well, that's absolutely incredible. I mean, Richard, you answered a lot of my questions in like one of the sentences talking about grav left because you know you mentioned that grav left right now. You know, when people go up a hill and they come down, I know you said that that that's being fixed. So already, that's uh, honestly great to a hear. A, a lot of people game. really love you know racing in Star Citizen, whether it's ship racing or ground vehicle and yes, grab right it now. Has drones. Um, so, you know, we just they appreciate work. the work that you guys are doing, especially for just the community. I, I know there's a lot to listen to and people are sometimes. Yeah, I would have more, to be a lead. I'll call it too passionate. So <laughs> please, uh, you know, passion is good. Your passion is good. Remember, but we're humans. <laughs> <laughs> constructive criticism goes a long way to yeah. make sure that you guys are, are, are listening because, you know, you you kind of go too hard. And, uh, you know, we we do greatly appreciate it because right now, you know, um, we're about to see Fight or Flight World Championship. So we actually took three uh, players from three regions. We actually competed. We had a little bit over about 150 competitors o- overall, which was great. And then we had um, uh, a regional competitor from Americas. 
EMEA and the APAC. So we had the incredible uh, community from China Lyon, actually Star, put together Star Citizen uh, competition that alongside that we were able to, and they're going to be battling it out tonight. Ah, nice. Debut. For an incredible uh, trophy that we have. We haven't showed it yet. So, man, it should have been a great time to put it here. But for some damn reason, they doubled down with Yes Men. It weighs exactly, it's Martin. <laughs> it's a <laughs> okay. butterfly trophy. We're gonna be showing Ooh. it off. Yes. 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 Okay. When you see it, you're gonna videos, be like, "There's no the way game is mis it looks, being mismanaged." Really really can I get a sneak peek? Probably not, right? Yeah, yeah. We, we can oh, go up oh, here nice. during break. <laughs> I'll, I'll take you. Uh, nice. But anyways, <laughs> last question for you guys, and this is just something that I like to tell everybody. But is there anything that you really want to say to the community? Um, you know, at, especially after this Where weekend here at Disney Star Wars. Where's Quantum Boost? I mean, like the easiest thing is to, uh, to mirror what, what Chris Roberts said during the closing note today, right? This game wouldn't be possible without you, the community. And um, like <laughs> for me personally, I have the what best a job in the world. Interview. Thank you for that, right? And we'll try to make the what game as best as we, can, uh, as we can. Um, so yeah, thank you really, thank you. Yeah, just be patient. Uh, Richard, any any last words Same. here for the community? S Same, yeah. You know, it's just a big thank you. Massive amounts of steam for what it's called in the Squadron 42 you know, demo. Slow moving ships that are super yeah, close that you can effortless hit with your yep. turret. You know, so you know, it's just a big thank you. you know. But, but you cater that like the the issue is with master moats like you don't if I have a small ship I'm not getting close to your big ship because I know like once I'm visually smaller I'm harder to hit but you're bigger so I can pause but I can still I can still hit you from two kilometers away but you can't hit me at two kilometers you know what I mean it, 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 especially if I want to be a, a a little cheat and 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 spam uh uh and spam coupled mode. But here's the thing, guys. I'm gonna I'm gonna rewind this back to the uh, beginning here, and I want to show you guys. Um, because I said this before, but this is gonna be part of my upload. Uh. Right there. I know you guys need to unblock me, right? Unblock my boy. I don't know how the hell Goofy uses this thing for those settings. So I'm just going to do a full reset so you can get operational. Just follow the on-screen instructions for the All calibration right. program. Stand by. We'll start with tracking. Since we're out here hunting a Vandu plan, I'll load up one of their ships for you to follow. All right, so here we see, right, they have holographs, right? So if they combine this with with the with the vector lines that they have uh, that, sh that they show later on when he's when he's when he's uh flying the idris not the idris but the javelin if they use these two these two elements they could very easily you they could very easily use these elements to teach people how to try court right because we watch this watch what he does They're using simulated rounds and they're using holographs, right? Holograms, I mean. And over here, over here they have vector lines. So if you combine these two things, you can teach somebody how to try chord. Because here's how you make the tutorial. You can say, okay, you've been out of the, the UE Navy for however how many long time and uh, here's a flight refresher course for the CDF and you basically go through the same thing they just went through and and you learn how to tricord and fly or they could teach you the shit in Squadron 42 but I don't think not everybody's going to play Squadron 42 so you have the tutorial in both games you use all of your assets you use you know what I'm saying like you can use all of these assets to teach people how to fly and it'll be fun because there's literally no risk of them dying blowing up or anything like that they're going to be probably in deep space shooting simulated rounds and this could be a part of the, the tutorial you know what i'm saying a part of that onboarding process for star citizen but 
instead of having that, we get training wheels put on us and then we get lied to and we get people like Bill and William lying to us, to our faces, talking about, oh, I took on two, me and my buddy fought 11 guys in, in master modes and we won. Like, I need to see a video of that because I don't believe that. You know, I don't like having my flight restricted with training wheels. You know what I'm saying? And this is just the reality of what we're dealing with right now. And like I said, guys, I will never stop fighting this master modes because I understand that if master modes continue the way that it's going to go, this game is going to turn into Eve online. And if you have a small org with just you and a few of your buddies and you're just trying to play the game and have fun, you won't because orgs are going to dominate every single region of the game. There's only going to be five systems and orcs are going to dominate each of those systems. You're not going to be able to do anything. You want a base build? Too bad. You're going to have orcs rolling in, stealing all your shit. You want to go uh, try to uh, fight a uh, uh, rob a base? You're not going to be able to even get in because there's going to be a hundred guys in a base that you're going to have to eventually fight. <laughs> you know what I mean? This this could potentially kill the game. But if we have skill expression in combat, if we have the ability to tricord and do all these different maneuvers, it at least gives the opportunity for us to have a chance if you want to uh, if you want to increase your own skills and be the best pilot that you can. You know what I mean? And this and what I propose is also better for capital ship gameplay because you're not gonna have fighters tricording you at, you know, two and three kilometers just chipping away at you. They're gonna have to get close. And then when it comes to capital ship gameplay, the gameplay is gonna be like, hey, can we potentially get our fighters or, or keep our uh, bring the enemy fighters closer to our capital ship so that we can shoot down their fighters and attack their capital ship? Imagine how big tests, how fast test squad will build their bases and space stations. They're probably going to test squad is probably going to have space stations within the first week. They're already going to be building in the first week because they're, it's the biggest org in stars. They have 23,000 players in test squadron. Like who's going to go up against that? They're like, I'm not saying that at any one given time that test squadron will be on and they'll have all their players on, but they will dominate servers. You know what I'm saying? They'll dominate servers, and that's not going to be fair to people who just want to get in and play the game at a at a casual rate. You know what I'm saying? It's not going to be fair. It's not going to be right. So, and Test Squadron, I guarantee you, Test Squadron will probably be the first org with a with a with a uh, with a uh, we call that thing a bingo carrier, right? And here's and guys, I'll I'll be honest with you, right? I probably maybe I misunderstood what the end game would have been for this game, but I initially thought that the end game four star citizen would be capital ship gameplay, right? That the idea is that you live on your capital ship and you take your capital ship to different places to do different things, right? So maybe, maybe there's uh, a vandal raid in Nyx and we go to Nyx in our capital ship and we fight the, we fight the Vandal and then when that's done, we go to Pyro and we, and we fight, you know, we fight nine tails in Pyro. Then we come back to Stanton and we do a bent in Stanton. Then we go to Terra. We do it in a bent in Terra. But that's what I thought the end game of star citizen would be with people in orcs living aboard capital ships and not having space stations. Because while I understand the need for space stations and things like that, for me, the perfect end game for, for 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 me would be if we had capital ships that we had to bring resources to to keep operational. Like we had to bring, you know, we like they have some type of reactors instead of like having rocket engines. They have maybe they have uh, fusion reactors, right? They have fusion reactors, and we have to constantly be being uh, be uh, bring resources to our to our capital ships to keep those reactors going. You know what I'm saying? Like that to me is, is much better than bringing resources to a space station because unlike a space station, I can move my capital ship to wherever I want to take it. You know, that's how, that's how I would do it. But, you know, I'm interested to know what you guys think. So let's talk about it for a second. 
Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. You know, let me go to the, uh, the to the day two stuff. Let's go to the uh, where they talk about base building. Like me personally, I, I don't have the time that where I want to sit around for a week building a base. I was thinking similarly with the capital ship gameplay, it sounds like they're going for more, ver more ver org versus org stuff. Right. You can still do org versus org stuff with capital ships though. Materials we saw the process talked about earlier with Thorsten. Of course, we want this. It is our refinery. Once again, there are multiple types here. This one is the large solid matter refinery. We have liquid and gas again, as well as biological, depending on the type of materials that you're using and want to produce. Refinery has input and output grids for input, as you might expect. That's what us industrial guys are for. Yeah. And then the output. Like, I understand, like, but uh, so here's the thing, guys. I'm not into base building, so I'm not going to knock it. And I also understand like this base building presentation wasn't for me. Right. I understand that. I totally a hundred percent understand that I'll be the guy that'll be going to these bases and either buying resources or stealing them, depending on what mood I'm in. Right. But I understand that the base building like concept and gameplay loop is not for me. That's not, that's not a gameplay loop that I will, but that I will be going down for one. It's too much of a time sink, right? I don't, I don't have time to sit around and, and, and be building bases for months on end. I think if bases, if bases can be built within like a week's time, maybe, you know, you will cover my back while I build a base. I could do that too. You know, I could, I could support people while they, while they build bases, you know, you know, run support and stuff like that. But me actually doing the base building i'm not i'm not doing that like that's too much of a time sink for me um uh i do think that you know it's an important gameplay loop for people and star citizen should have it i'm not saying that the like it's it, like we shouldn't have it that's not what i'm advocating for what i'm saying is for me it's too much of a time sink and it's not something that i'm interested in if i were to get into the in-game content i would much just rather live on a capital ship and then need to bring supplies to my capital ship to keep it operational. That's a much better thing for me because I can move that to where I want to put it. Let's just say, for instance, like the capital ship that I get is a Kraken, right? Because I'm more of a fighter kind of guy. I would much rather take my Kraken, park it somewhere in deep space where nobody can really find it except for me and my, and me and my org. And my my kraken has a quantum beacon and i could launch i could launch from my from my from my kraken i can hold on instead of doing this let's uh let's do it like this so we can have some uh some visual representations right Should I free cam now? There we go. All right, here's my Kraken, right? I would much rather just take this Kraken, park it in deep space, have a, uh, have a quantum marker for it, and then do my operations from the Kraken. That's what I, I would much rather do rather than, um, you know, having a space station close to a plane. Now, Theoretically, you could have a space station that is, um, you know, in deep space. Like, you don't have to put your space station right next to the planet. I think they just did that for, you know, the video, for the video itself. Like, if I could, like, the best place to probably build your your actual, uh, your actual base would probably be, like, 
in the sun if the game allows you to, but they probably won't allow you to. Well, maybe they will because, you know, this game is buggy. But, yeah, I would mother, much rather just have all my my fighters up here and, you know, my other bigger ships on this side and just use this as a base of operations. And then, and let's just say I needed to, you know, re refuel my Kraken, I would literally just bring another ship and refuel my Kraken. You can fly it to the station and shuttle things that you need and fly off again. Exactly. Exactly. That's what I would, that's what I would do. The deeper in space you build your space station, the more time you spend hauling supplies to base. That's true, but it also provides you an extra level of security. So there's trade-offs to it. There's trade-offs to it. In the midst of nowhere, right beside your location, you would position your capital ship. Yeah, I would put, I would, um, game's not working. Let me see. Star Citizen. Star Map. The Arc Map. Now we got to pull all this stuff up now. So I can. Oh, where the hell is Stanton? Uh, I'm going to go 2D because it's going to be easier for me to see. Uh, jump tunnels. Put all of them on. Uh, there's Odin. There's Nyx. Pyro. Stanton. Here we are. I'll just use Stanton for an example. Like. In Stanton, I would just literally have like my capital ship just out here somewhere. I just park it out here or here, maybe somewhere here. And I would just do my operations from these areas instead of like parking my capital ship like next to Hurston where it can easily be found. I'd just be out here somewhere. Once you build a base in game, you become married to the game and the base. Yeah, like I don't, you know what I'm saying? Scar, I don't, I don't, I'm not ready for that type of commitment. You know what I'm saying? But if I can park my capital ship in space and, and log on and log off on my capital ship where where my where all of my ships currently are, then that to me is, is much better than um that to me is, is much better than being married to a space station to where it's just sitting here around this planet the entire time. Out in the belt it goes around the system. Yeah, the uh this belt right here. I don't think I can zoom in on it, but you're talking about out here. Out here could work too. But yeah, I just sit like an area like this just next, as an example. But yeah, you can you can you can hide your capital ship like out in this area, or you could even build a station out in this area because uh, there's a lot of resources that you can mine in areas like this. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I would do it. But you know. I just use a Kraken as an example because it's probably going to be the, uh, for anyone who is more of like a, uh, a fighter pilot that wants to do like bounty hunting and stuff like that. For me, the Carrick is like a good in, in game for me. But another ship that I do want to add to my fleet, which is going to be probably be my, my next biggest ship is the Perseus. There it goes. It was on top. This will be another one that I add, and this will be basically a support ship for this ship. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that's pretty much all I got for you guys today. Um, I will be uploading this as a uh, as a as a standalone video as well. Um, just a short stream today. I really wanted to come out here and react to that with you guys. And dude, I have to give you guys another shout out. I have to give you guys another shout out because you guys are rocking with me. I got 27 people in here and make sure that we're hitting that like button guys. And you know, uh, if at all possible, subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already, um, you know, become a member, all that fun stuff. And we're going to be doing more reactions guys. We're going to be giving our collective grade. It's going to be a fun stream. We're going to go through and we're going to grade citizen con day one day two and we're going to give it an overall score and i got to give you guys some homework okay not homework really 
but the biggest part of the grade for citizen con is pyro and squadron 42 demo now here's what i'm thinking guys and you tell me if this is fair you guys tell me if this is fair the big part of the home uh, a part of the grade is did the entire player base get did the, did, did the entire player base get to play pyro and did we get to play a, a squadron 42 demo now keep those things in mind as we continue to grade um the citizen con throughout the week and i'll see you guys in the next video peace